I've been baking this recipe about once a week for probably the last three years or so, so I've got a pretty good handle on what works well and what can go horribly wrong. This kind of simple approach delivers a really solid loaf of sourdough. It's a great recipe for beginners or for people with really busy schedules. Now I've done this on the channel before, but as I'm updating the blog and I'm filming a new video anyway, I thought I'd share it again along with a few secrets to help you bake this loaf successfully. So into my bowl goes 260 grams of water and straight up I've got my first tip. With these no need or hands off methods, try to keep a sensible hydration. This specific recipe makes a dough that's hydrated to 70% and I found that if I go too much over that, my dough doesn't develop enough strength. Now I'm gonna follow this up with 90 grams of ripe sourdough starter and that's at 100% hydration. And then after a quick stir, I can add in 390 grams of strong white bread flour. This one has got a protein content of 13.2% and it builds an absolutely bulletproof dough. If I was to use a lower protein or softer flour, the dough becomes harder to handle and doesn't build up as much strength. I add in nine grams of sea salt and then I combine the ingredients using a spoon. Once it comes together, I can use a wet hand just to make sure there's no dry spots of flour. So at this stage you could continue to mix until the dough is relatively smooth and the starter's well incorporated, but you know what, that takes a bit more effort. So instead I just mix until I've got a rough dough like this and then I simply cover the bowl and I leave it on my bench for 10 to 15 minutes. Then it's simply a case of turning that dough over for 15 seconds or so. Now this isn't to develop strength it's only to complete that mixing stage. And as you can see, the dough is still extremely rough. So this will be left to ferment at room temperature, which today is 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I wanna hit a minimum of five hours of bulk fermentation time so that the dough has enough time to develop strength. But I don't wanna push it too far. I don't want the dough to increase by more than 75% in size. So if my kitchen was warmer, the fermentation would happen a lot quicker than my five hour minimum target. And in that case, I'd just keep the dough in a chili bin or a cool bag with an ice brick, and that would just keep that temperature down. And I guess you could also reduce the amount of starter in the recipe, which would also extend the fermentation period. Here we are five and a half hours later. I've done nothing with this dough since mixing, absolutely nothing. It's increased in volume by about 75% of its original size. And remember, I don't wanna push this specific dough too far. I shake the dough carefully because I don't wanna knock too much gas out of it. And then after a quick dip in rice flour, it goes into its basket seam side facing up. Again, I don't want to overproof this dough, so it's going to sit out covered on my work surface for just 45 minutes. The dough is going to continue proofing in the fridge anyway as that temperature drops. And again, if it was warmer, I could reduce the ambient proof time, or I could pop the dough into a chili bin to keep it cooler, or I could pop it straight in the fridge after shaping. Right, so the dough sat overnight in the fridge for a total of 18 hours and I've preheated my oven and baking stone to 220 degrees Celsius or 430 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the dough is gonna bake for 20 minutes covered with a lightweight pot and then it's gonna bake for a further 25 minutes uncovered. Now the full recipe plus all the tips we're talking about now will be on the blog which I'll link to down below in the video description. So despite being a simple method, this produces a really nice looking loaf with minimal effort. The crust is well developed, it's got a nice golden color. It's a nice even bake all the way around and no signs of a burnt bum. I think there's a real beauty to these no need crumbs. They're kind of random, a bit disorganized, but they look stunning. The crumb is nice and soft and not at all tacky. So even though I held back on that fermentation period, and the room temperature prove, the dough still had plenty of time to ferment properly. You can certainly smell and taste the sourness, but it doesn't run up and slap you in the face. It reminds me of kind of green apples and grapes. It's a little bit fruity and slightly sweet. This fits really well into the everyday white bread category. It's a simple, straightforward sourdough. So 
There's nothing to stop you from giving this a whirl. And to understand why I'm so careful about how far I push my fermentation and proving stages, you should watch these videos here. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.